Eucharist is Father Pat. Please stand and join us in singing our entrance hymn, Let Heaven Rejoice, printed on the screen. brothers and sisters, we are here today because the Lord himself called us. Come to me, he says. And we have come to him, full of thanksgiving, to celebrate the Eucharist, to worship him, and receive his help. The Lord is kind and full of compassion. Let us truly repent of our sins and come to him praying for forgiveness and grace. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek, and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we hear Jesus, the teacher, exhorts his disciples to come to him, especially those who are burdened and are labored, have labored so much, and he promised to refresh them. But he also exhorts them to imitate him in his meekness and gentleness and humility. Today, gentleness is not as highly regarded as it was once. There was a time when the best, or the, the best compliment we could give someone is to describe him or her as one who is gentle. Our word gentleman testifies to this. Today, violence is more popular than gentleness. TV has given it a widespread audience because, unfortunately, it uh, kind of gets big ratings. The movie industry glamorizes violence. We have seen this also 
recently in the protest that's going on in the mainland, how these uh, violent protesters loot, you know, and resort to riots. And in the process, they even kill lives. Now all of this are taking its toll on us today. It is our duty's honor to have coined words such as battered wife, abused child, sexually abused, and so on and so forth. And our own families sometimes, if not oftentimes, reflect also the violence of our age. We shout, we kick no? things, we throw things, or shout at another, or call out other people names. Some people resort to character assassination, and so on and so forth. So how different from what Jesus teaches us in today's gospel? He says, and I quote, learn from me because I am meek and humble in spirit or humble of heart. Now the prophet Isaiah foretold the gentleness of Jesus when he said, and I quote, he will not shout or raise his voice or make loud speeches in the streets. He will not break off a bent reed, nor put a flickering lamp. That's how Isaiah describes the Messiah, how gentle he would be. Now, a beautiful example also of the gentleness of Jesus is the way he handled the case of that woman who was uh, caught adultery. Jesus was gentle not only with the woman, but also with the self-righteous accusers. Jesus did not shout at them, he did not rave at them, he didn't scream, and he didn't yell. Jesus simply bent down gently, wrote in the sand with his finger, that's trying to say, I am not impressed with your Pharisees and scribes. His actions stood out like a clip or a clap of thunder in the silence of a summer's night. But as you see, Jesus taught us to be gentle too. And Jesus held up for us, for our imitation, the shepherd in his parable of the lost sheep. If you may recall that parable. The, the shepherd did not beat the sheep after he found him wandering. Rather, or he didn't drag the sheep back home in anger for wandering away from the rest of the herd. Rather, the good shepherd placed gently on his shoulders. Jesus also held up for us, for our imitation, the father in the parable of the prodigal son. The father, when the wayward son returned home, the father did not shout at him. He didn't kick him, you know, or give him a job. You know? The father in the parable did not uh, embarrass him or hassle him. Rather, what did the father do? He hugged his son and kissed him. A boy named Joseph had a crippled back, and his back don't even look so bad when he is wearing his shirt or robe on. But when he took his shirt off, it really looked ugly. And so Joseph hated his back because of how it looks. One day he stood in line at school waiting to be examined by the school doctor. And he always feared, again, people seeing his back, especially to this doctor. And so he was kind of afraid when the doctor would tell him, OK, take off your robe. But anyway, the, final, final, the moment came. It was his turn to be checked. So Joseph's hand was kind of shaking as he took off his robe. So the doctor looked at him and then did something very unusual. He walked around the desk, cups Joseph's face with his big hands, and looked straight into the eyes of the boy. Son, he gently said, do you believe in God? And Joseph said, yes, sir, I do believe. Good, said the doctor. You know why? Because the more you believe in him, the more you believe in yourself. Now God created you wonderfully and he loves you so much and that's what matters in life. So then just as suddenly as the doctor had shown his gentle, his gentle side, 
of his character, he reverted to being a business-like doctor. So the doctor went back to his desk and wrote something in the chart. Then he left for a minute. Now Joseph's eye looked at the chart and he was wondering, what did the doctor write there? So bracing himself for the words of what he might read on the chart, he aims forward to pick on the chart. Now under the heading, people of physical characteristics, the doctor had written, and I quote, has an unusually well-shaped head. That's what he read in the chart. He couldn't believe what he read in the chart no? because he was expecting something terrible. Soon the doctor returned and he checked a few more things on the boy. Then he said with a smile, okay, Joseph, you can put on your robe now and please send me the next boy in line. The short episode in Joe's life took place many, many years ago, but Joseph never forget the gentleness and the encouragement of the other words of the doctor. And so my brothers and sisters, again, today's gospel contains, I believe, an important invitation for all of us. It invites us to learn from Jesus because Jesus is gentle and humble in spirit. Concretely, what does this mean for us in the coming weeks or in the week ahead? I believe it means we try to respond to those who wrong us as Jesus did in the case of that adulterous woman or as the father did in the parable of the prodigal son. We try to respond with understanding. It is also that we try to respond to people's burden as the doctor did to the crippled boy, Joseph. We try to respond with tender sensitivity. And so again, mothers and sisters, as we continue to reflect on this gospel today, we remember the words of Jesus as he invites us, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Please stand and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers today, let us remember especially all people who carry heavy burdens and huge responsibilities, both in the church and in the world, as well as 
in their personal lives. For the Pope, as leader and shepherd of the church, may the Lord bless him in his work of encouraging people to come to the Lord, to be relieved of unnecessary burdens, and to find rest for their souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the millions of people, including children, in our own and other countries who are trapped in forced and unpaid work, sexual exploitation, bonded labor, and various forms of slavery and human trafficking today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people and for families with heavily burdened lives, for those with great responsibilities and the demanding care of others, and all who are worried and stressed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the ministries of public life, civic leadership, education, and community service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishioners who are sick and homebound, especially Sarah Caspino, Donald Zane, Cookie Maldonado, our family members, for fa Father pa Pat in his upcoming medical procedure, those listed in our parish bulletin, and those who care for them, may they encounter God's holiness and healing in the midst of their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Michiko Matsumoto, Timothy Grizier, our family members, parishioners, and all the souls in purgatory may enjoy the eternal peace and rest of God's heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of those in the medical field responsible for public health for doctors, nurses, and all hospital personnel, and those responsible for public safety, especially the firefighters, EMS, police, and military personnel, and for their families worrying at home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all of us gathered here, those spoken aloud and those held in the silence of our hearts, we pray especially for steadfast faith of those who continue to experience persecution throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in your loving kindness, you remind us to come to Jesus, your Son, to shoulder his gentle yoke and to learn from him. Grant these prayers we make both for ourselves and for others through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song can be found projected on the screen. Let's come to the water. Once again, projected on the screen.
please rise. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, particularly those who perish from this COVID pandemic. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, is yours forever and ever.
my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated for some announcements. Volunteers will be needed to help disinfect and sanitize the highly touched surfaces inside and in front of our church after the Mass. Mahalo. We encourage all of you to please give your weekly offertory donations through our safe and easy online giving system. For any inquiries, please call the parish office and Mahalo for your continued generosity. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, Bishop Larry Silva extends the dispensation from the obligation to attend Mass to all the people of the Diocese of Honolulu and all visitors to the Diocese through August 31st, 2020. All who are able to attend Sunday Mass without putting themselves or others at serious risk of infection are encouraged to do so but are not obligated. Thank you all for coming together to worship as God's family. We look forward to celebrating with all of you next Saturday and Sunday and wish everyone a grace-filled, faith-filled, safe and healthy week ahead. As God's stewards, let us all be continually involved in our parish community. Please join us in singing our Sending Forth hymn America the Beautiful, projected on the screen. Mahalo and have a blessed evening and holiday weekend. Before the final blessing, I would like to say thank you for those who have been praying for a successful uh, scheduled uh, Hills Prayers of mine. But fortunately, and thanks be to God, for the moment I will have to postpone it. I'm doing better, so. My great doctor, Dr. Tony Cordero, is just uh, suggesting some things for me to do, exercise, and also maybe taking medication. So for now, I'm, I'm doing okay. So we decided to postpone the surgery. But thank you for all your prayers. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life.